we are looking at reading and the brain. This is part one. Let's start with five nonsensical ideas that seem to make sense, but they really are nonsense. Defining reading. Reading is sounding out words. That is not correct, but that's the assumption many people start with. Poor readers just need more practice sounding out words. Again, that's sometimes the worst thing that you can do. So number three, having students practice sounding out words makes learning to read easier if they would just learn how to sound out words. That's not quite correct either. If readers stumble on a word, you should tell them to sound it out. Well, that seems to make sense, but sometimes that's the worst thing you can do, as we will find out. And there's one approach to reading instruction. If we would just do this, then all children would learn to read. Don't you know? That's not true either. That is nonsense. Here's what reading is not. Reading is not sounding out words. It's creating meaning with print, as we will look at. The phonological model, our phonological processing model, is an obsolete model that says that reading goes from bottom to up, just sounding out words is reading. That's why we don't use common sense to make educational decisions. We use science, because science sometimes gets above common sense. And big words, fancy pictures, and brain imaging does not mean it's accurate. A lot of people will use these big fancy words, and you're supposed to go, Ooh, articularly network? Hmm, that must be special. Students with reading disabilities, sounding out practice does not help them. You need a little bit of phonics, but that a little bit does not mean that more is better. Phonics only programs. If the only thing you're doing with a student who is a struggling reader or has a reading disability is sounding out practice, phonics only, these are usually more harmful than helpful. Also, identifying a list of words in isolation is not reading. Some programs and some assessments such as Dibbles, bad program, would assess students' reading ability by having them identify a list of words out of context. That's not reading, as we will see. So the, uh, the phonological model, this bottom-up view of reading, reading goes from page to head, is inadequate in describing the complex process the brain used to create meaning. And here's the phonological processing model. Words appear on the page, we process them with this two little parts of our brain here, and then it goes to the cortex. That seems to make sense, but it's not correct. Meaning, letters and word images come to our eyes, through light, waves and particles, etc., goes to the thalamus, and then it goes up to the cerebral cortex. Oh, that seems so nice. What reading is, is creating meaning with print. I could sound out all these words, but unless I know Latin, I'm not creating meaning. I'm just barking at print. Reading is a thinking process, not a responding process. We aren't training our children to respond like Pavlov's dog to a certain letter. That's why we use the transactive or the interactive model to help us understand what reading is. It is a meaning-making process. What's in the head transact or interacts with what's on the page to create meaning. The phonological view of reading is a very limited view of reading. And again, it posits that words move from the page to the thalamus to the cortex. All right, that is a limited view of reading. The next view will look at reading as a neurological process.